I suspect that we're going to continue to see the existing growth model in place through next year. As you mentioned earlier, we have the all-important National Party Congress in either October or November of, ne of next year. And I think traditionally the leaders don't like to see, you know, bad news during the year of the Congress, uh, particularly for such an important one as, as, as the one next year. It's after that that I think we will start to see pressure on, on various parts of the system to get debt under control. And if you get debt under control, by, almost by definition, that means you can only rely on, quote-unquote, high-quality growth to generate the GDP growth. And as I said, I don't think that's much above 2 to 3% at most. So my guess is that at some point after 2022, we'll start to see a sharp slowdown in the, in the Chinese growth rate. Yeah, but sure, fair enough. Uh, I want to understand um, w which sector will still hold up. There is a sense that consumption will, will, will be the strongest pillar. But even on the consumption side, when you look at the unemployment situation, and you know, yesterday the China Stats Bureau said that that could be a structural problem, you know, could, could that be a spanner in the works that could you know, just put further pressure? Well, the, the reason we worry a lot about consumption is because of housing prices. As you probably know, um, your home represents roughly 80% of your wealth if you're an average Chinese. And if we see a decline in home prices, and I don't need to tell you Chinese home prices are extraordinarily high, but if we see a decline in, in home prices, that will, uh, that will reduce the wealth, the perceived wealth of households, and typically they respond by cutting back on spending and rebuilding their savings. And if that were to happen, that would be bad for consumption. But more normally, the way China would adjust is with a small slowdown in the growth rate of household income and consumption and a very big slowdown in the growth rate of investment, which is you know, you know how Japan adjusted in the 1990s. So GDP growth will drop a lot, but consumption growth won't drop that much. The real, you know, the, the real shock absorber will be a public sector investments and property investment. So what does that mean? Well, you know, China uh, um, uh, consumes more than 40% and more than 50% of almost any uh, industrial metal that you can think of, 40-50% uh, um, of total global production. And that's because they're so heavily investment-oriented. So as, that, um, as they reduce investment sharply, which they'll have to do if they're ever going to get in control of debt, we should see a big drop in demand for industrial metals, but not for agricultural right. commodities. Because if China does it right, consumption will continue to grow a little bit more slowly, but still quite solidly.